people think stuff comes for free. If you've got talent, you get into Formula One, right? That's clearly not the case no. here. You know, you've had to make these sacrifices, ha have various little moments along the way where you've had to make the right decision and you do, and you end up in Formula One. And I remember watching from afar and I watched you come through and, you know, you were the most successful young British driver for a period when there was some great British drivers. Alex Albon was, you know, based in the UK, racing yeah. under a Thai flag. And Landon Norris, obviously, at the same time. So I then remember watching your first season at Williams, but those guys are in a Red Bull and a McLaren and are picking up points, picking up podiums, and you're yeah. not. I'd love to know how that felt and how you processed that from being, as you described as a young guy, like you just won everything. That's what you yeah. did. And suddenly you weren't. Yeah, that was a really unique season for me. My first year in Formula One, joining Williams and a team that was on the brink of bankruptcy. And it was a team of every single race weekend, it was racing to survive. It wasn't racing to perform. Yeah. The team was racing to survive and the 800 people's jobs at stake and um there was no doubt you know when i got to the first race in australia i'm here in formula one you know almost one dream accomplished and go out on track and we're four seconds off the pace yeah. the car's falling apart and we're being lapped two or three times kind of thinking to yourself you know is this the dream <laughs> in a way yeah. but i think i've always had quite a um rational view to things and while seeing Alex in Red Bull scoring podiums and you know being the man to a degree and Lando equally always in the points and that was sort of difficult to digest because I'd just come from Formula 2 where I I beat them yeah. and now you know I've almost just been put how did you digest it? I thought that even though they're finishing the points and they're scoring podiums I'm not here to score points or podiums, I'm here to win and I want to win. And even though they were finishing ahead of me, I'm we're both we're all going through this journey towards together, learning. I was part of Mercedes and I felt like my time will come. Yeah. So it was I think every time you from a from a difficult situation you've got to try and look at the positives from it. I was driving at the back of a grid, kind of under the radar. I was making a few mistakes that season, but not many people noticed because people weren't, the spotlight wasn't on me. You know, the spotlight was on the guys at the front. Equally, the spotlight was on Lando and Alex. And if ever they made a mistake, the whole world knew about it. So I saw this as an opportunity that, you know, I'm in Formula One, going to 21 different countries, 21 different races, uh, different circuits. This is my opportunity to learn and perhaps try things that, for example, Alex and Lando didn't yeah. have the opportunity to because the spotlight was on yeah. every single weekend was but also you couldn't have done these things either because you and previous seasons were racing for titles and championships yeah. every year so you had no exploration behind the wheel did you no absolutely I think um, and that was a real mentality change for me I had a teammate uh, in Robert Kubica who had a horrific accident in 2011 I think it was and he'd been out of an F1 car for for a long long time and he had a very difficult season so I was almost racing in no man's land but there was this one race in Monaco I was driving around I was ahead of Robert by quite quite a quite a margin I was behind the, the next gaggle of cars and I kind of thought to myself, I'm just going to bring the car home because what's the point in risking it? You know, I've kind of achieved all I could, all I can in this race. I can't beat the cars ahead. I've already beaten the car behind. Bring it home. And there was a moment in that race that I thought, this will teach me nothing. If I just drive around for the next hour and a half, just bring in the car home. This isn't going to help me in one year time, two years time, three years time. If ever I'm racing for a Mercedes, if ever I'm racing for a race win or world championships. So I just sort of turned up and just went absolutely flat out every single lap around Monaco, kind of risking everything for 19th position on the grid because I felt like that's what I needed to do yeah. Yeah. if I wanted to learn and progress. And it's from that moment on for the rest of the season, that sort of every single race, every single qualifying, every single session was this opportunity for me to build a you know, greater toolbox of experience for me to, to wow. tap into whenever I needed it in the future. I love that because that's something that 
as I'm listening to it, is the first time you're almost driving without pressure yeah. because there's no expectation on yours yeah. has previously come. And then you find pressure within, you put yourself under some kind of pressure. Yeah, it was, I was racing against myself. Yeah. You know, I I stopped thinking about my teammate and I stopped thinking about everyone else because we were so far behind, we couldn't compete with anybody else. So I was purely competing with myself and I'd have races or sessions where I finished 19th. I was ahead of my teammate behind everyone else. But I was really disappointed with my performance because I knew I could have done better. And for some of my team at the time, it was a little bit difficult to to understand. You know, on paper, I'd finished in the same place as I finished last race, uh, finished ahead of my teammate again. All of those boxes were ticked, but I knew I could have done better. And I think that's really helped me yeah. to develop from a you know this difficult situation. Yeah. I could have done that whole season, just two toured around, just beating my teammate, finishing behind the rest. And I'd have got to the following year then I'm slightly more in the game, but I've just wasted a whole season. So I think every single opportunity you've got, you've got to make the most of it. So tell us then, what did you learn about yourself in this season of discovery and and exploring your own limits? What's the biggest lesson that came out from that? I think the biggest lesson was probably success is all relative. You know, when I grew up as a young go-kart driver and going through the ranks of F4 to F2 success was being on pole position and winning and when I got to Formula 1 that just was not achievable in the Williams in that season so I couldn't come away from every single weekend being disappointed with myself because I've not been on pole and I've not won the race you have to readjust your not necessarily your goals but your expectations and you have to find your own successes you know i would celebrate when i was only half a second away from 15 uh, from from 18th from the grid rather than being a second away because that was relative success and for me that was kind of like a pole position and if i didn't celebrate those moments that 21 race season would have felt incredibly long and that helped me to um yeah sort of get through that season and to progress as a driver are you glad that you had it I think, I think so. I, I never want to look back and say um, things should have been different. I think every single opportunity, every single year, whether it's a good year or a bad year, adds to your sort of development and it made me who I am. Those experiences, if I was in a Mercedes fighting for victories, I wouldn't have had those mm. experiences. And I have probably been through in that regard maybe more than what you know Alex or Lando has you know they've been Lando's been at McLaren now for five years he's been fighting for the odd podium or pole position for five years now whereas I've been on sort of every end of the spectrum yeah. and you've got to see that as an advantage yeah. you know he hasn't been right at the back of the grid but equally he's not been right at the front of the grid in in McLaren and it's no through no fault of his own you know Lando's an exceptional driver but you know, that's an advantage I've got to, got to take from that. Yeah. I mean, I think I think what you're describing there is fascinating. There's research on this that your brain respond like releases the chemicals to celebrate whatever your expectations are. So if you expect to get half a second quicker and you do it, your brain releases the same chemical that if you if it because you've hit your target. Well, so even you if your target was to win the world title you get the same chemical release as as fi- half a second where George faster. was finishing at that point, right? Yeah. So, so how do you deal with like setting micro targets now? You know, rather than setting, I want to be the world champion. Yeah, sure. Rather than the small incremental steps, do you do that now? Yeah, I I think I n- I never like to look too far ahead. I like to take every single day as it comes, and I believe that. If I perform to my very best today, if I perform to my very best tomorrow, whether that's in the gym, whether that's you know talking with you guys, whether that's talking with my engineers, whether that's in the simulator, whether that's a Friday practice session, if I do the, the best job possible that I can do every single day, I'll achieve that overall goal. So I never like to set you know this. Obviously, it's it's obvious I want to be a world champion. That yeah. it's too obvious to even set that as as a goal because it's that's what we're all here to do 
you know, my goal was to wake up today and make sure that I do everything right and go to bed thinking I couldn't have done more than I've done. And if I achieve that every single day, that that goal of world champion will come. And he made it clear, go and perform and you'll be in the car. That speed and thrill I got from experiencing that Formula One car, I had added motivation and fire within my stomach. That was just such an awesome experience. What did you think when you realised who it was that you'd had a coming together with? It was quite a scary moment. I'd never crashed at that speed before. I was doing 330 kilometres an hour, DRS open, got on a wet patch, the car just spun. I'm going sideways down the track, carbon fibre flying everywhere. I can't see to my right because you kind of locked in the cockpit. I don't know what I'm going to hit. Just a quick one to say thank you so much for watching this content on the High Performance channel. We would love it if you would subscribe. You know, most people that watch what we do don't subscribe. If you can subscribe, we can make this bigger, better, bolder than we've ever done before. So hit subscribe right now and help the High Performance podcast make a real difference to the world. See you soon.